the word of god is alive and powerful sharper than any two edged sword piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow and it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart all scripture is god breathed and is profitable for doctrine for reproof for correction for instruction in righteousness that the man of god might be mature thoroughly furnished unto all good works study to show thyself approved unto god a workman that needeth not to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth or accurately handling the word of truth one more day being renewed in the grace of our lord to the praise of his glory and the glory meaning doxa which meant to say from the root verb dokia and dokia means to think and the bible doctrine demands for us to move from glory to glory and the same passage is what we can read from romans 12:2 it says renovation of our thinking to the praise of his glory in his grace and how we can renovate our thinking until and unless we cast our vote to bible doctrine in each and every day as lord renovates upon us his grace though we are faithless he is faithful and he abides faithful because he is not a man to change his word nor a man to lie and that's the only simple grace what we can enjoy but prior to that we need to be much cautious enough to look and to understand what it would meant to say for us that lord has kept us alive what is the purpose for him so that we should know now and we should learn about him now and we should consider about him now and look upon the reality of the word dear brethren until and unless we go on from our thinking to be renovated from the childhood till to the point of adulthood till to the point of becoming a mature man we are not really living for the true life which lord has designed and kept for us in eternity past our lord has told that as a newborn baby you need to desire since your milk that is in first peter 122 23 and 24 and following and furthermore he says in matthew 4 4 man does not live by bread alone but he has to live upon every word which lord god almighty has spoken and furthermore we have have a same lesson to be learned into the reality of hebrews 5:14 which tells to us strong meat belongs to the one who has taken a solid nourishment and that strong meat are those for whom who have become spiritually mature so that now they can discern what are priorities what is the true purpose of life what is the meaning of dokia what is the reason that we need to understand not to be following as per the old testament and samples the old testament and samples where lord has chosen israelite to overcome over the canaanite the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. Why Lord did rise the Israelites to overcome? Because the Canaanites were the people who were trafficking in the God's word. They were the one who were using God's word for their own business, like the people who now we can see in the Christendom of the Church Age, like the people who are trafficking with God's word for the purpose of their social gain, financial gain, and intellectual gain. And this is what we are able to find. And the second category of the people of Hittites. we can find this were the fearful men they were the men who were fearful not to execute the protocol plan of god they were the men who were not able to understand that it is god's word when they have come to know they have to follow it because of their status quo in their place they couldn't wanted to follow it exactly the same thing is happening today in the christendom as well today the men doesn't want to follow the word of the lord but rather they want to look upon the useless and worthless things which bible doctrine clearly states long back that they have left the co- and the amorites are those people who are preaching but without the power of lord god the holy spirit because if they would have the power of lord god the holy spirit in their preaching then it would be more holy walk it is the caption for them that is they are talking easy and talking more and walking less at the same time they are preaching more and practicing less but when you are there in the power of lord god the holy spirit you are going to preach and practice the same because every ruler in Deuteronomy chapter 18 which is 17 chapter 17 has been told that if he wants to be a king he has to write at least once the copy of law and today if you can understand the same principle we need to understand if you are to become an overhead above the people who are been given in charge for you like 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 a pastor you need to at least write once the entire bible and this is what that we are there preaching and if they are preaching that this man who has been already preaching it he has to make it into use of practice and if he has not written once then he cannot preach that is where the categories of the amorites were 
And these Amorites were the people whom they were preaching, but they're not able to understand. And such kind of Amorites are being found more today in the pulpits. They think that they want to wear long robes. They think they can have the high places. They think they want to have the salutes. They think they're having a long prayers in the widow's house. And this is what it is very wrong for us to note. The prayers, it has to be as short as it can be, because the more doctrine you know, the lesser will be your prayer. The lesser doctrine you know, the more greater will be your prayers. The only reason is, when you can understand doctrine, you will come to know the essence and the character of Christ. And as you come to go along into knowing the understanding and essence of the character of Christ, you will definitely involve yourself to humble the words which you are going to speak. Because you need to answer for each and every word that you are having and even the motivation behind that thought. And Lord knows everything, what the best we can do. We need to align ourselves and match ourselves and tune ourselves into the word of the Lord. And when the Lord, and, and, and when the Lord could see that we are meeting his standards, then Lord is going to bless us or Lord is going to propagate what is required on our part. And that is very simple principle with our Lord. The conditions we need to meet and Lord is going to do the remaining work. Without meeting his conditions, we, though we wail, though we weep, though we go for intercession, though we go for petitions, though we go for supplications, it is not going to work out. Meet the conditions and see how Lord will do it. And some of them will say, Lord requires tithes, so I am meeting his condition in tithes, so why not Lord is helping me? Tithes is not designed for the church age, take it granted. Tithe, even for the Old Testament time, it was for the reality of paying income tax, both believers and unbelievers would pay. But that is not the reality. The reality is, how much are you really trembling for Lord's word? And the greater is your trembling for Lord's word, greater holiness of Lord will be upon you. And greater holiness of Lord will lead you to walk in righteousness and in truth. And as you walk in righteousness and truth, Lord is being given definitely the order to bless you. Where you walk in righteousness and justice and in truth, Lord is binding to definitely bless you and make your name high. That is what Lord's principle is. Because we need to go from glory to glory, from lesser thinking to greater thinking, and from greater thinking to still greater thinking. And thinking is what? Learning Bible doctrine, to change our thinking, to change our attitudes, to change our mind. But here what is happening, they are preaching no practice. Talking much and walking less. And why is this happening today? In the church age, it is happening so because we don't have really the great people for Christ. We really don't have the great men for Christ. And that is what it is happening today in our church age. What for they are coming to the church? What for a minister is standing in the pulpits? Does he really recognize that he has a bona fide gift from the head of the department of the church? No, he doesn't want to recognize it. He just wants to enter and he wants to stand there either for social gain or financial gain. Because of the intellect, intellectual knowledge, what he has learnt, like Zakir Naik, Sheikh Hamadidad, without being applying to their conscience and heart. That's why we find great failures in the Christendom today. Not many men who are being able to really struggle to attain the mystery doctrine of the church age. Not many men really fighting out to give and to inculcate the protocol plan of God in the lives of the people. Not many men are able to understand that our Lord has built the body so that the bride could be designed perfectly by the ministry of light God, the Holy Spirit. This man, they are thinking they can do it with their energy of human flesh. But no way, your human viewpoint will not work out. It is only the divine viewpoint and it is only the divine energy, Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Because it is a spiritual phenomena, spiritual phenomena, spiritual phenomena. And we, the believers, have been called as Alec Anikides, as new spiritual spaces unto Christ. So the Amorites have to be under the power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to overcome right now in the church age. I'm using it as, a, a, as, a, as an analogy to understand. So that we can know that in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, is all the wisdom and intelligence being deposited. Without Christ, we cannot have anything for us to be known. It is in him that our Lord has deposited this mystery doctrine of the church age. It is in him, now it has been measured as a treasure for us. And that treasure could be revealed as Lord God, the Holy Spirit, reveals to us the scripture. And as we grow up, Lord Jesus Christ will be glorified. And no man is going to release the secrets of his heart until unless he is going to be glorified. 
or he is to be honored. That is what we the principles learn in this worldly manner of living. If a king hearts has to be known, if you talk to him pleasably in honoring him, he's going to reveal all the secrets. In the same to same manner, when we want to know about our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, to be glorifying him, to be honoring him, to be learning about him, we need to have a principle of agency, and that principle of agency is Lord God, the Holy Spirit. He is the only one who knows how to please that Master Lord, how to release the treasures from him. And those treasures are being hidden and kept for us in Bible doctrine. We need to dig and look. And the bona fide gift of a pastor teacher is a bond slave to Christ. His duty is to dig and look. And every believer is a bond slave unto Christ. His master will take care of him, whatever the mannerism of purity or sanctification he has to go through. And he has been kept apart very purely for God's work. He cannot compromise with exquisite friends. He cannot look for this, he cannot take for that. His work is to look upon sanctification, 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 holiness, holiness, holiness. And the holiness is a combination of the righteousness and the justice of God. And until unless you walk in the truth, you are not going to be revealed. Until unless you make sure you are there in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, Lord God, the Holy Spirit is not going to reveal to you the information that has been kept hidden for us in eternity past. No way, no chance at all. We may think we can do greater things by weeping, wailing, fasting. No, that doesn't mean nothing. But we need to renovate our thinking. The outward man perishes, inward man has to be renewed, said Second Corinthians 4.16 for us. And we need to renovate our thinking to the high standards of the maturity of Bible doctrine. And that is what you move from glory to glory, dokia, to means to think. And greater glory for God we can get as we pass down the spiritual maturity examination when you go through the three stages of the subtle spiritual life. Spiritual self-esteem or spiritual autonomy and then by spiritual maturity. What is the doctrinal status quo? In the first stage it is cognitive self-confidence. That is what you are absolutely aware of doctrine. In the second stage it is cognitive independence. Apart from doctrine you don't want to look at any other counsels. And the third one, cognitive invincibility. There is nothing that can win you against doctrine. Even the death of your loved one. You want doctrine more than the physical breath you take. You want doctrine more than the physical food you take. Doctrine is thinking of Christ. Thinking is glory, glory, glory of Christ. It cannot be anything more for you to imagine if it is not thinking as glory to Christ. And that is what you and I have to take care of. You and I have to think. You and I have to understand. You and I have to look. And we need to search the glory of Jehovah in Bible doctrine. So that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ glorified his Father, Lord God, the Father in his human form. And we, the church age believers, being his sons, we need to glorify our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, but through the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. And we cannot go in any other manner, any other trends. By trying to think we can live just by the, keeping with the fellow men in just manner, by having pious towards God. And following the rituals? No. We need to be in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. The greater the fellowship in the Lord God, the Holy Spirit, Lord God, the Holy Spirit goes on for experiential sanctification. Positionally, you are being made holy and blameless. Experiential sanctification demands that you need to be unreprovable. You need to be in a greater extension for unreprovability. And you cannot look upon XYZ trends, XYZ methodologies. And the greater our negligence to look for this unreprovableness in the witness born in this angelic conflict, greater a life that you are living of meaningless. This human life has an orientation with the angelic conflict. And if you are not associated with the angelic conflict, you are living a life that is not a life at all. Take it granted. You need to be associated with Bible doctrine, dear brethren. You need to be associated to learn the word of the Lord, dear brethren. And you need to be associated to look the principle of the reality of the word of the truth. Because the true principle of life that could be given for your activated human spirit and soul has a highest and the best and the greatest spiritual life given to you to live. And how many days more you want to add up your life? Before writing this New Testament, our Lord has revealed for us in through Isaiah, through Jeremiah. In fact, even through Ezekiel as well. When the thinking gets perished, the spirit of Egypt will come upon them. What it is? Wankerals demon. And you have the forbidden idols. 
You have the charmers, you have the wizards, you have the soothsayers. And above all, you do have the ventricular demons, which has nothing but to agonize. Agonize in the sense, speaking gibberishly. The same thing what we can look in the New Testament. When your thinking gets perished, you want to go upon to follow rituals like forbidden idols. You want to go and look upon the counsel of men, traditions of men, taught by the men of, taught by the traditions of men of this world with great philosophical ends. And you want to look upon those ventricular demons. But now we have the, not the ventricular demons, but we do have something known as the Angastramutas demon controlling your vocal cords. And blaspheming, my Lord, wherever, whenever a clock spokes and speaks about tongues in the pulpits of Pentecostal crowds. They are not really glorifying, my Lord, they are blaspheming, my Lord. And they do not even know the origin of these tongues from where it comes. They do not even have a look to understand what it meant to say in the book of Isaiah to give a sign for them. When the true work of those prophets who have been there in the northern kingdom have to go and evangelize, they were drinking and vomiting. And in the great anger when Isaiah entered them into the room where they were drinking, he saw them the way they were really mumbling around in their drunkenness vomiting and he tells to them the time comes when these Gentiles will talk to you in their languages and that is what the tongues meant to say there not these tongues what these morons they want to talk and tongues was a gift given to those people so that they can understand to the point of AD 0070 that it was a form of evangelism that this our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is the only true Messiah believing upon him you shall be saved before the destruction of the temple which was taking into place. But what happened? They thought it would be pleasurable for them to do XYZ trends in the tongues business, what they're doing today. They do not even know, they say, it is an edification complex for their soul, which they're edifying between, them and, between themselves and God. They want to say it's an angelic language. They want to say it is XYZ trends. Morons, they are, can't even read the first chapter of Acts very clearly. And such kind of a morons are ambled to the court today in our pulpits. And Satan being blinding their eyes, they are not able to understand the Angastamutas demon, the damage that is causing to their soul. Why the thinking got perished. Even as such today, the thinking is getting perished in the pulpits. Therefore, they want to follow the tongues, the miracles or the healings. What is the thinking? Thinking is the glory of Jehovah, the mind of Christ, Bible doctrine. So that we, the believers now, can understand what is the true thinking in Christ. But we are not at all interested to look or to understand what is the great thinking in Christ. Dear brethren, this is what is happening today. The reason is there are no enough right past teachers who have the bona fide gift to go and to explain for you in the concept of ice, isagogical, categorical, and exegetical explanation with the proper dispensing technique of dispensations. Whether you love it, take it, believe it or not, the word of the Lord is in dispensations because our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ controls the history. And he is the one who has formulated, originated the dispensations and who are we to stop it, to tell it is wrong. And who are we to tell exegesis is also wrong? If we can better understand the Greek, in John 1.18, it stands written, No man has seen God at any time, but the Son of Man who has come will explain it to you what he is. The explanation is the word used in exegeomai in the Greek, and that is what the origin for exegesis. And how many days more you want to play pokery? You can play it through popery as well. But we don't have time to waste. Neither we are interested to waste. Because our thinking has to be renovated. Our thinking has to be aligned with the mind of Christ. Our thinking has to be for the greater glory of Jehovah. Not like those Amorites who preach in the power of flesh, not in the power of spirit. And then we do have the application for them, the Parasites and the Hittites. 
The parasites were the people who want to formulate not in the spiritual power, but in the power of men. And they want to rule. The Hivites were the people who doesn't want to take upon that power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, but they want to be subjected in this power of men, and they think, we have obtained one role that is enough for me, and I'm going to perform it. And then we do have the last category, the Jebusites, who trample the word of the Lord, such kind of an explicit teaching. When we take so much of pains to exegeat and tell to you the truth, you say it is not worth, and you just trample it under your foot. And we don't worry about that. Do you know why? Lord is our rewarder, not you. It is for you, for your benefit, if you can change your thinking. I don't have any benefit on this. But rather, if it would be pleased for me, like a watchman who has blowed the horn to you, and you have not heard, then the, the, then the blood will be upon your own head, not upon me. The one who wants to accompany in the teaching ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, when they come together, either few people let it be, not some ample of multitudes, I need to take responsibility for them when they are positive, when they cast vote for Bible doctrine, and they have to see their and they have to see their growth, their spiritual growth. Even if it is my own brother or sister, if they are not into doctrine, God will give me greater brothers and sisters in this kingdom of Christ. Do you know why? Our Lord himself has told, those who forsake their brothers and sisters for, for my sake, don't think you have lost them. You will have greater brothers and sisters in Christ. The true fellowship, the true bondage. Dear brethren, we are here to come with one accord to the praise of his glory and his grace. We are here to glorify him to the maximum. We are here to show forth the true worthiness in Christ. And we are here to reflect from the thinking of Christ as we walk. And that will be the greatest glory for Jehovah. So dear brethren, which way you want to go, you decide as we shall continue in the next tape. Because if it is longer the tape, people may not come back to understand the reality of the word. So let me cut short the tapes so that you can understand. But one thing to conclude, the six categories of the people which have to be conquered, the Canaanites still to the point of Jebusites, the CJs, C2J, have to be conquered in our pulpits. The place at Bokim, we can understand. Our Lord warned them, I have made an everlasting covenant with you, but you did not obey my words. So that these people will be constantly beside you, the thorns and the thistles and the bushes for you. And they will never let you go so easily, dear brother. And they got married. And it is interesting to note for us that this men, they have not been conquered in the Old Testament time. Because they gave their sons to their marriage and their daughters to their, and, and they've taken daughters for their marriage. And this is what we can find today in the six categories of the people from the Canaanites to the Jebusites. One of the either of the trend, the old sin nature is getting married to them. And as long as you get married, you're not going to be used for the purpose of God. If you come to Bible doctrine for your social gain, for financial gain, you have lost. If you have been fearful enough to execute the protocol plan of God, you have lost. If you are not practicing what you're preaching, you are lost. If you are formulating your own human viewpoint rather than spiritual power, you have lost. You have been ruled by that category of the religious sect, being found by the human view power, like the Hittites, you have lost. And if you trample the word of the Lord under your feet, you have lost. And you have been absolutely married to either one of the trends of six categories. And these six categories are always dangerous. And these six categories will not yield you for the true purpose of Christ. We need to overcome them by the power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit who controls us. We need to overcome them to the praise of his glory. We need to look upon doctrine as never before so much of importance for us in this Alekenikates period, which has been termed out as new spiritual species in Christ, because of the great polity of privileges given for us. We need to overcome. And we can overcome, because greater is the one that is in us than the one who is in this world. And the one who is in us, if he controls us, if he rules over us, if he takes lead us, and if he makes us to walk in his path, and if he makes us to live a life that is glorifying for him, then Satan really starts to think about you. 
Don't think so easily. Satan is going to give a goal to be hit or to write an amazing deed. It is not going to leave you so easily, dear brethren. It will ultimately use the best one at the last. In the life of Job, it was his own wife. In our life, who it is, Lord knows very well. But you need to say, when you have been occupied with Christ, Satan has nothing to take from us. It is in the hands of the Lord to make alive, to keep dead. It is in the hands of the Lord to wound and to heal. It is in the hands of the Lord to do everything. It is in the hands of the Lord to tell to tell a great lesson for Nebuchadnezzar as he was thinking in his heart, is it not I, in my own might and own strength, have built this? It was a lesson for him to be learned. It is not in your hands. It is Jehovah who directs the dispensations. It is Jehovah who rules the kingdom in the mortal realm as well. And to whomsoever he seems fit is going to do, then what for we need to worry in this earth? Worrying about the trails of Satan, worrying about the temptations of Satan, worrying about your XYZ friends of Satan. So what? Cast all your worries and burdens upon Christ. He's going to take care of it. But you worry about doctrine, doctrine, doctrine. And you worry about are you really trembling for Christ? Are you really having the holiness of the Lord to be guarded for you? And in this church age, we have been given a greater responsibility not to grieve or squelch. Lord, get the Holy Spirit. And you have to be very careful because we believers constantly grieve and squelch either by thought, word, or deed. And in the privacy of our priesthood, we need to use rebound so that we can get back and make sure that we're in the fellowship of Lord, get the Holy Spirit, so that we are not grieving nor squelching. And that is what you and I have to learn, dear brethren, the greatest lessons of all time. So which way you want to go, you decide, as we shall come back and continue in the next day. Father, we're grateful for the privilege that thou hast given to our fellowship with you through thy word. We pray that Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and let us on these things and make it a source of blessing and challenge, sovereign Lord. For we ask it in Christ's name, Father. Amen.